Hello, Blake Rudis here with your On One quick tip, and today I'm going to be focusing on On One Effects 10. So, uh, here is the original image. This photograph was taken on the island of Oahu in Hawaii, and uh, it was one of these things we climbed about a quarter of a mile, about a thousand feet up. It took us about 40 minutes to do it. It was absolutely nuts. I did it in flip flops because I didn't know what to expect that day. Anyway, um, I took this shot and it was like, wow, you know, look at how vast this scene is. So I shot it for HDR and it worked out great for me. So now I'm in on one effects 10. I'm looking through the film presets here and I see this Fuji Velvia 100. And if we look at the uh, before and after on this now, here is what happens when you apply that Fuji Velvia 100. So the quick tip that I want to focus on is that when you select a preset like this, we look at this and we say, okay, there's a lot of things that I think are wrong with this. Uh, the highlights are a little too high. They're a little bit blown out up here in the clouds. Um, we've lost all depth in the photo because we've put all of the contrast on the same playing field. And we can kind of see that with our histogram up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at these settings right here, the overall settings. So I'm not even going to go into the tone, the color, and all the other things that are happening with this preset because I actually kind of like what's happening here. But I'm going to go over the most powerful things that are in OM1 FX10. And for me, that's right here in this uh, protection area. So if you're familiar with Photoshop, these are very much like what you would see in the blend if principles. Now, when you use blend if, you're typically protecting certain areas, but it gets really confusing because people are like, well, what does this blend if mean? Blend if what? Well, here it's really simple and it's really easy. It's basically saying protect. Protect the highlights on the underlying original image from what's happening now. Protect the shadows, protect the skin, etc., etc. So as we move these, watch what happens. So if I look at the shadows, see how the shadows are clipping? We've got areas in here that are really dark, and we can see that based on our histogram because they're pushed so far to the left, but we can also see that visually on the sides of this mountain. That's one of the things that's uh, kind of killing this photograph for us. So if we protect those shadow areas by moving this over, watch how the histogram now uh, protects those areas from clipping to the to the extreme. All right. So it's not just about picking a preset sometimes. Sometimes it's about knowing what's happening to your histogram and to your image. Now, a lot of times when, when I'm working the histogram, I tell people just let the data be data because that's what it is. However, that data tells us some really important stuff when you're over here on this end and your, your shadows are clipping so much that those are pure black black that when they print, they just be these nasty, pure black blotches. Okay. So we're going to move that shadows over to the right until we pull away from the edge there. Now you can see our, our blues in the shadow areas are still quite high and that's okay because down here we have this skin protection measure. Now this is basically saying protect skin colors, but in, uh, portrait work, that's true, but in landscape work, that's almost like your midtones. So if we move this to the right, you can start to see how it's now taking our midtones and pinching that histogram and pulling them in to protect them on their the, the whitest area on the right hand side and on the left hand side from the darkest areas. So we can pinch that in and now we've protected our skin tones. And then we can even do that with our highlights to make sure we aren't blowing out up here in the corner. So if we move our highlights over, you can see that they move left of the histogram and now that area is not blowing out. So part of this is looking at the histogram, knowing that the far right are your blowout areas in highlights, your far left are your blowout areas in your uh, shadows, and then your midtones are anywhere in between. So if we look at the before and after now, here's the before, it's kind of washed out, it doesn't have a whole lot of depth to it. Uh, but now we've, we've actually accentuated that uh, even though the saturation is a little high, I would go in and play with that a little bit more. But you can see sometimes you don't have to go into all the little nitpicky intricacies of each one of these different parts of this preset. Sometimes all you have to do is go right in here to the overall settings and protect certain areas from going too far to one extreme or the other. And here's our finished image. And here is our before much better with one click of a preset and just a couple moves of sliders. Sometimes it's good to start on the extreme end and pull back. And that's how I like to do a lot of my editing. I take things to the max and then pull them back. All right, Blake Rudis here signing off from your quick tip. Just remember, get into those overall settings and look at those protection measures. It's not that difficult. Just protect the highlights from anything that's happening in this preset. Protect your shadows, protect your skin, et cetera, et cetera. In my opinion, this is the most powerful thing in On One Effects 10.